I've been working on the Yak-15 for 7 months. When I started, I thought I'd have a flying prototype in one month, even with no experience designing and printing airplanes. In this video, I want to take you through some of my experiences trying to recreate one of the first Soviet jet airplanes. Enjoy! I checked the CG one more time, I put the LiPo on charge, and I logged some time in the simulator whilst I waited. This was the culmination of months of work. Every single time I've taken the aircraft out to the park, it's been a disaster. This time was no exception. Let's ignore the fact that I was headed for the trees at full throttle for a second. Many design flaws of the Mark III prototype would prevent this model from taking flight, principle among which was the weight of the aircraft. I hadn't yet learned the importance of wing loading yet, and at this point, the aircraft was just too heavy. I also made a grave mistake with the landing gear. Not only was it not replaceable in that it could not be disassembled, but also I had printed one of the legs with 20% infill instead of 100% infill as I'd planned. An oversight, a mistake. I wasn't confident with lightweight PLA. This led me to reinforcing certain parts of the aircraft with 8% infill instead of 5% infill, which I used for most other parts of the airplane. The whole front and midsection were printed like this, which added a few hundred grams. With further testing, I realized this wasn't necessary, and on the Mark IV prototype, I made sure to cut down as much as possible. The landing gear were permanently glued in place, and there was no means of replacing them in the event of a failure. This was rectified in the Mark IV design. In fact, I made my best effort to have all the key parts disassemblable, as I had to take apart the Mark III prototype to retrieve the electronics. This was a very sad day. There were some other issues with the landing gear, axle and shock springs. In short, I need to use bearings to reduce wear on the plastic, and I need to use thinner wire springs for there to be any reasonable compression. There was too much weight in the tail of the aircraft. Due to a lack of confidence in my materials of choice, the retract was bulky and heavy and didn't even work properly. On the Mark IV, I tried to trim as much as I could and fix the steering problem with an entirely new steering assembly. The landing gear and the tail are powered by the same 17 gram servo, and the tail wheel is designed to self-center when retracted, using springs. I don't suppose this was necessarily the best way to go about it, but it sure looks fun. All that weight at the back needed compensation at the front, which I achieved by printing the nose cone and the battery hatch with regular PLA. It ended up being around 500 grams that I needed to get the CG in the right place, on top of the 6S LiPo I was using for the power system. In a word, the plane was carrying an unholy amount of dead weight. If I had known better, I would have scrapped the project at this point and started again. But live and learn. I found it pretty hard to install the electronics on the Mark III design, so on the Mark IV, I hollowed out the interior, and I made sure to account for the installation process in my design. Let me give a little bit of information about my power system. I'm using a 70mm X-Fly motor for all these prototypes. It produces around 2.4 kilograms of thrust, according to the datasheet. I was only able to achieve 2.2 on my homemade thrust stand. Admittedly, that could be due to the inaccuracy of my own design. I was, however, able to achieve 2.7 kilograms of thrust with a thrust tube. For the previous prototypes, I was using a 6S 3300 mAh LiPo battery. It was always insufficient in terms of capacity, and it was rather lightweight for what I need. I ran all the numbers through a wing loading calculator and found that my results were not promising. It was at that point when I scrapped the Mark III design and started working on the Mark IV.
I decided to use embedded nuts instead of threaded inserts as I haven't had much luck with them in the past. I simply designed a hexagonal hole and glue it in place. It isn't foolproof and it's a bit finicky, but it worked. The installation of all the electronics and retracts was quite easy this time. I removed the retracts multiple times to run tests and change features, and this was relatively painless. If a landing gear does fail this time, I'll be able to replace it. I think it's awesome that you can just 3D print your own landing gear, but they do come with some drawbacks, which I'm happy to accept. There's going to be a lot more friction due to the way 3D printing works. You can hear the ridges rubbing against each other every time the shocks compress. I also imagine they'll need to be replaced relatively often, but I don't have the numbers to back that statement. They'll likely be a lot weaker than the metal alternative and heavier to boot, but maybe I can design a lighter pair eventually. The weight problem has been dramatically reduced in the Mark IV. It's almost a full kilogram lighter than the Mark III. There's still some redesigning that I could do to shave off some more weight, but I believe that the aircraft is now in a flight-worthy condition. Additionally, the tail no longer needs composition as it's light enough that the original 3300 mAh LiPo battery is more than enough weight to put the CG in the right place. What a relief. The Mark IV prototype was originally designed to incorporate flaps, but the flap mechanism adds around 100 extra grams, and I want to see what the aircraft feels like in flight before I commit to that. I had originally designed the outer wings to be removable, but the PLA pins snapped, so I'll be gluing the wings on for the maiden flight. Other than the tail leg braking, I'd say that was a beautiful test run. The ground control is very smooth and responsive, and the bearings have significantly improved acceleration. The original tail wheel was very thin, and I'm not surprised it snapped. I increased the thickness of the plastic and added some supports where I think it needs it. That should do the trick. In the next video, I'm going to maiden this plane, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching.